shring ka e i la ring asa ka la ring sa ka la ring sa hoin kling ring shring namaste so last time we introduced the maha shodashi mantra and the siddhi mantra the siddhi mantra is the prelude to the Mahashodashi Mantra, and that should be chanted before beginning the main mantra, before and after, actually. So this time I want to go over a little bit of the background, origins, and so on, of this very special, very powerful mantra. And I also want to start talking about the bijas, the sound seeds of the mantra. So, the Sri Vidya is the teaching to which this mantra belongs. And this is a teaching on the level of Vishishta Dvaita Vada. Uh, we've talked so many times about the four views, Chatur Darshanam, uh, noted by Shankaracharya. And the Vishishta Dvaita <coughs> view is conditional non-duality. Advaita means duality. Vishishta means conditional. Why conditional? Because at this stage one is still more or less convinced of the reality of the material world. But he knows, he has knowledge from the scriptures and from the guru and so on that ultimately there is no material world, there is only consciousness, non-duality. So his view is called Vishishta Dvaita. And this is the realm of bhakti, and not just ordinary bhakti, huh? the kind that uh, is commonly taught, which is actually karma yoga, simply uh, dressed up like bhakti. <laughs> But real bhakti is spontaneous. Uh, love is always spontaneous. It's never forced. It can't be synthesized. <laughs> Neither can consciousness. So this Sri Vidya is a very ancient teaching. According to Sri Tripura Rahasya, which we've gone over a little bit in, the, in this channel, the Sri Vidya or Shodashi Vidya was first taught in the Satya Yuga by Lord Hayagriva, the horse incarnation, to Agastya and his wife Lopamudra. Again, in Treta Yuga, it was given to Lord Parashuram by Dattatreya, the combined incarnation of Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara. And he's considered the greatest incarnation because he has the qualities of all the three uh, guna avatars. Parashurama gave it to his disciples and thus this teaching has been present, uh, passed down to the present day for thousands of years. Many scriptures talk about this path and they glorify it as the only path and the only mantra that gives both material and spiritual benefits. Of course, spiritually, it leads to prema, which is pure, concentrated, spontaneous love. Uh, very, very beautiful state. And materially, it gives the benefits of karma yoga without having to perform all the rituals of karma yoga. This is a very wonderful benediction. Huh? Uh, from my own life, I can give an example. The, uh, one of the benefits is that chanting this mantra cures chronic disease. Chronic disease. Well, about 25 years ago, I had a wisdom tooth extracted and another tooth was, uh, had to be root canal, the next tooth, uh, to the wisdom tooth. And it had three roots, 
but the doctor only found two of them. So I had basically an infected tooth sitting in my mouth for about 20 years. And a dentist in India here discovered this about 10 years ago. And he tried to heal it. He tried to uh, do a root canal on the omitted root. But it didn't go well. <laughs> and it got the infection from the root started to spread. And I began to get chronic sores all over my body, but mainly on the head and shoulders areas. So this went on for a long time, and it was misdiagnosed several times by different doctors. And finally, I went to a naturopathic doctor, and she correctly diagnosed it as a staph infection. Now, I don't know if you know that staphylococcus is a considerably uh, re drug-resistant type of infection. And uh, if it gets into your internal organs or your brain, well, forget it. <laughs> so I had this uh, infection sitting there right next to my brain. Uh -huh. It was very dangerous. It started to go into my ear. And uh, just actually about, well, I had been treating it externally, treating the symptoms. But then it started to go internally, went into my ear like this. And so I had to get a, quite a bit of antibiotics to finally uproot it. Hmm? Because it was hiding in that tooth. It was hiding in the bone. So to get a disease like that, you have to wait until it becomes symptomatic. If it's still in its hiding stage, it won't respond to treatment. But because this had come out and now it was trying to make these sores all over, it was easy to get it with the antibiotics and actually the treatment went pretty quickly. And now as I'm recovering from this, I'm still in the process of recovering, I can see how it dragged down my metabolism over a period of years. So the cure happened right after I started chanting Maha Shodashi Mantra. So this is exactly in line with what is given in the scriptures about the powers of this mantra. And a lot of other areas of my life are also starting to look up. But it's too soon to really make any claims about that. <laughs> But I can say that now the treatment is complete and the disease is cured and I'm feeling so much better. So Mahashodashi Mantra gives both material and spiritual benefits. And so this is really the most powerful mantra because it gives pure bhakti. Huh? The worship of the feminine supreme. It is not that Shiva is the absolute God, and then uh, Ambal is like some kind of subordinate to him. No. No, you've seen the picture where she and Shiva come together in one form. And this is a very famous form of the Lord, which is known as Aranadishwara. So this Aranadishwara, the purpose of it is to show that Shiva and Shakti are one and the same. One being, one Brahman, with two manifestations, the Ishwara and the uh, Shakti, the controller and the controlled. See, the energy and the energetic. So this is the basis of all Vedic knowledge. And so it is highly recommended that uh, one should practice and study this. Uh, so now this series is going to be about the uh, Mahashodashi Mantra. But before we get into the mantra itself, we have to discuss Bijas. Bija mantras are syllables which embody some sacred potency. And they can be, they're called bijas because bija means seed. 
And when you plant this seed in the right ear by hearing from the Guru and then water it by chanting, it gradually grows into tremendous benediction and auspiciousness. So a seed sound, a bija, can be composed of one syllable or several syllables together. For example, the, the bija sa is one syllable, one character, rather. And the bija kling is actually four characters kind of welded together, but it's, it's one syllable. Okay, Sanskrit is tricky that way. Now, each of these syllables, each of these characters, each of these seed sounds has a specific meaning and a specific potency. In fact, the entire Sanskrit alphabet, each letter, has a specific meaning and potency. For example, A, the first letter of the Sanskrit alphabet, is uh, very deep very powerful in its meaning. It is the root of Aum. Okay, so A means creation. It also means non-destruction, uh, that which can never be destroyed. It can also mean, uh, well, it can mean many different things, and they all basically depend on the context. Okay. So, the bijas usually end with the sound ng, ng, uh, a kind of a nasal resonant sound similar to the sound of the tangpura or sitar. You know how the strings resonate and produce these high-pitched harmonics? Well, the same happens if you say one of these bijas end it with ang, mm, like ang. The sound goes up the nasal canal into the pineal gland in the agya chakra becomes energized. And what this means is that the effect of chanting that bijam becomes permanent. There was a nice passage, a nice story in the uh, not the Lalita Sahasranam, in the Tripura Rahasya, we talked about it. The author of the Tripura Rahasya started out as a very simple boy. And in one lifetime, he became very ill. And he was calling out for his mother. And his, his mother, his, his father used to address his mother as Ai, meaning the goddess. The syllable I is sacred to Ambal. So the boy, while he was sick, was crying out for his mother, I, I. Huh? And because of the power of this sacred syllable, in the very next life, he became the disciple of Parasharam and became the author of this Tripura Rahasya, wonderful scripture. So, when he was reminded about this by Narada, he said, I, I don't remember any of this. What is this? What are you talking about? I don't know anything. What are you, I'm just an idiot, you know. How can I write this book? Well, Narada told a story. In your previous life, because of chanting I, you were benedicted by the goddess with all knowledge and the ability to express it. But... In this life, you don't recall any of that because you chanted I without the termination, ing. See? The syllable, the uh, mantra, or the bija, ing, is the cause of transcendental wisdom. That's why the Guru Gayatri. Aingurve Namaha uh, begins with the seed syllable, the root or seed, Aing, Aingurve Namaha. 
Sí. So, I will give permanent realization of transcendental knowledge, while I, all by itself, will give knowledge only in this life. See, so the, uh, the syllable or the sound ing at the end drives the energy of the mantra up into the Agnya Chakra where it becomes crystallized and can become part of the seed of the next birth. This is deep transcendental science. All these mantras have specific effects because the meaning of the letters, the characters of which they are made, was determined by the Lord at the beginning of creation. Aung Tatsa, Buddha Saranai.